And now we got, I still know what you did last summer. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the, the, the same exact movie, just in the Bahamas. Now. Right. Yeah. I've been doing a movie about Jackie called I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, and everyone knows what it did. He smoked pot and, oh. and drove around in that Heineken raft. Very repetitive. Yeah. No, you know it's what a boring movie. movie. I still know what your act is. Yeah. <laughs> I still know what you did last summer. You did the same jokes you did the summer before. <laughs> Yeah. Well, speaking of smoking pot and driving around in a Heineken raft when you're 50 years old, yeah. I got Chris from High Times on the phone. Uh, Chris is a guy who takes part in the Cannabis Cup. Now, is this the first year of his judging? I think so. I think the story on Chris is, and I got to get my notes out on him, but I think the story on him is he was a, he's a kid. He's like 21 years old. He was in college, and he dropped out to go work at High Times. Oh, really? Because he's like so into pot. Let me, hear, let me get him. This is funny, man. Hey, Chris. Yes. Hey, dude. How's it going? Are you like 21? I'm 22. Yeah. And did you drop out of college because you're so into pot? Well, yeah. I got the full-time job there at high time, so I had to, uh... Wow. That's good. You're going to be pulling down three, four 400000 a year over there. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, what are you making? What am I, what am I making? Uh, I'm, I'm making up into uh, the 30s there. Wow. Right out of school, that's pretty good. What do you do? You write for high times? Yeah, I'm a writer and an editor. Wow, right well, out of college. Me. I guess he'll be running Time Magazine or something. Probably, by the time he's 30, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're spending time behind bars. Yeah. Right, <laughs> in the month. Sure. High Times, I, you know, there was a magazine. I mean, I was a kid when High Times, I was a teenager when High Times came out. Yeah. Or maybe I was in college, I don't, I don't know. Remember. And I, when I remember I saw, like, the first issue of High Times, I said, well, there's a magazine that'll last for about a month. <laughs> because, you know, all it is is pictures of pot. The centerfold is pot. How to grow pot, what's the best pot. Yeah, how to talk about pot, how to get involved with pot. And the legal issues of pot. I mean, once in a while, you might see an article on psilocybin. <laughs> you know what I mean? They might break away. Some other hallucination. Yeah, but it's always pot. <laughs> Fifth anniversary now, so it's older than me. Yeah, it's unreal. In 25 years. It's like, wait, yeah. when I got into radio. How much of a circulation could it have? Um, I don't know. Around 200,000. Right wow, that's hefty. Wait, is that around the world? Um, yeah, it's international. Oh, yeah. okay. 200,000 probably subscribers, right. and people who buy off the newsstand. If you can buy it on a newsstand. But why do you need this every month? <laughs> people need it. Jackie, you subscribe, right? No. You don't? You know, it's like a uh, Penn House or Playboy. Look at the pictures. <laughs> you look at the, it's weird. You look it's at, too it's deep into the whole thing. And that's that's I gotta admit, they have gorgeous pictures of pot. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. They look great. You know, the buds are big. And yeah. It's all about the buds. Yeah. It's all about the buds. It really is. You've you, you got to point there. What is about the buds? You're interested this much. You can find that many articles to write about pot. Well, this is what's funny, Robin. He's, um, his name is The Pot Star, uh -huh. and he's got a column where people write in uh -huh. and ask them the dumbest questions, like, is a glass bong or a plastic bong better? Uh -huh. and what is better? Glass bong. I, I would think so, too, because it's natural. It's cleaner. Hmm. It's cleaner heads, and uh, plastic tastes, you know... It's all dirty and gummy, huh? Plastic, by the way, does it does sort of like not melt, but... But it retains, you know, it sort of becomes part of the pipe. Yeah, and it's very nice to suck the resins off the glass. <laughs> it's, well, suppose that he's becoming a bit of a star now, Howard. He's recognized from his appearances in high times. Really? The people stop on the streets and stuff. Yeah, well, it's been, uh... No, I think they stop because you look like Rick Rubin. I just saw a picture of you. <laughs> they usually veer away from me for that. Can you get chicks right in high times? Uh, yeah, I do my best. Really? Star, you know. Really? What other kind of advice do you give about pot? What other, what other questions are there? How much does pot sell for now? What's that? A good, a good ounce of pot, how much? Well, a good ounce of pot can run you anywhere from... Four. $600. Wow, that's expensive. When I was in college, I used to spend $100 or $125 for an ounce. This pot has gotten so strong, Howard. I know. The growing methods and everything. Believe me, I know. That's why I swore it off. <laughs> I started smoking again about uh, two years ago when I was making my movie. Right. And one night, I went out with Jessica Hahn and some people. I took three hits off a joint she gave me. Right. You almost crossed over. Uh, let me tell you something. I've done LSD. I was hallucinating more on this pot. Really? I'm telling you, man. I don't know. Like, where can I get that? Well, well, that's what Chris is saying. I said, you know what? I can't handle pot. You just gotta smoke right through that stage. Oh. Yeah. Is that what I did wrong? Yeah. Keep going. Oh, please. You, you smoked this morning already, right? Yeah, I took a, a bong hit while I was waiting on the phone there. So how much do you smoke? Oh, this guy smokes. You don't, you, you don't even get high anymore, do you? Like, you're just constantly no, on I pot. I definitely get down. I definitely get down. You I do. Just, it's just more of like a day-long thing. You stay stoned. Yeah, so like, 
you know, like when do you drinking water for me? You know, it's kind of a staple now. You said that like pot for you, it's like eating lunch. Yeah. It's like high, getting high isn't an event. It's basically the state you're always in. Yeah, I try to uh, practice what I preach. Mm. But you maintain that high. How are, are you smoking right now as I speak to you? Um, I could be, but I'm right now I'm talking. Do you ever smoke pot in the shower? Uh, actually, uh, I have in Amsterdam. Have you ever like woke it up in the middle of the night and like had to take a hit of some pot? I didn't have to. Like if I was sleepless or something, then I would come down and take maybe a bong hit or two and go back to sleep. Right. Is a bong hit preferable to uh, a joint? Well, you know, in your age of four hundred dollar, you know, an ounce, but you gotta just break it down, throw it in the bong. It's a lot cheaper that way. Right. Yeah. You don't want to waste it rolling up right. in papers. That way you can smoke everything, the seeds, everything. Right, don't need those roaches lying around wasting your pot. Right, yeah, roach. Your pot has no seeds. No seeds. Good quality pot has no seeds? No seeds. That's a million. No, no, I must have bought the worst pot in the world. <laughs> it was loaded with seeds. Oh, yeah. What is your bottle boy? Well, I'm looking at some of the questions he answers. Like, if, um, somebody wrote in and says, I'm curious as to what one can do to remove the smell from my buds to cut down the chance of detection. And he explains to you how to do that. How do you do that? Well, I don't know I, uh tried and true method, but um, there's, um, you know, ionizers that you could use that, that uh, change the smell from cool. negative ions to positive ions or whatever. And oh, hey, at wow. least, hey, dude, at least you're 22. Jackie's 50. Oh. <laughs> Jackie can answer any question about pot. Is Jackie going to come to the Canada's Cup? I want to find out what it is. Well, here's the deal. This is what they're promoting in high times. They have this event every year called the Cannabis Cup. Pot is legal in Amsterdam. Well, there's coffee shops on every street corner. There's, I guess, around 300 or so in the whole city. Yeah, they're not dealing with coffee. <laughs> right. <laughs> My question is, is that, are there a lot of pot smokers in Amsterdam? <laughs> What's the pot smoking population of that city? Yeah, there's quite a few pot smokers there. But they mix it with their tobacco. Ah. So it's more of a, uh, I don't know. I, I, I can never mix pot with tobacco. So you say you can drive while you're stoned, it makes you drive better, your reflexes are better. I, I must be on a different... All these guys always say that. They don't know how looped I must are. be on a different pot because I get so looped, I can't even see straight. But, but they don't realize how looped they are. I remember these guys. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do everything better on pot. Sure. Didn't you say you were in Australia once and you were very high and then all of a sudden you remembered you were in a passenger in the car but you were the one actually driving? Well, I don't condone it, but... He, does that sound like better driving? <laughs> I, was, I was in the rainforest in Australia and um, ate a couple of pot brownies and me and my photographer had to get back from town to our little bungalow in the rainforest, which is like a 30 minute drive. So it was, uh, and I was on the passenger side of the car, the, the opposite side, so I just, you know, I was just on autopilot, you know, in the, the dirt road and or I realized I was, that I was the one driving and not my photographer. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like he can handle anything. But, but eating pot brownies is much... Smoking, that's closer to taking... Uh, here's, here's the master. Expert. Here's the expert. Right or wrong? I mean, no, it's true. It's definitely true. It's a slow build. You can make strong pot brownies be stoned for up to like six to eight hours. Wow. I mean, really, really a nice shot. Uh, so you were at Sarah Lawrence College, and then all of a sudden... Isn't that a woman's college? Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, so anyway, you were at Sarah Lawrence College, right. and then you uh, get a part-time job at High Times, like basically doing go for work, and after three months, they make you an editor? Yeah. <clears throat> that sounds work. reasonable. Like, yeah, that's cool. Very expensive stuff. I had to get a part-time job, <clears throat> and I realized, you know, maybe I should just write it out for a while. You know, John's been an intern here for like 11 years, and we haven't promoted him. <laughs> That's what we think of our intern. We don't smoke pot. <laughs> you that's right. Well, if you're smoking pot, your decisions are all different. Yeah, that's unbelievable. <laughs> so, okay, so the Cannabis Cup is, you guys are going to, this is considered one of the biggest and most prestigious pot events in the world. Oh, yeah. It's an annual event held in Amsterdam. And you think you can handle this? How would I have a question? Upwards of 2,000 people will be there. Yeah, go ahead. It's I know Jackie's trying to get a free invite. No, this is one yeah. of the most prestigious.